Welcome back. The income tax filing deadline is fast approaching. And for more on what you need to know, I'm joined live now by Armando Minacucci, tax partner with Grant Thornton LLP. Good to have you today, sir. Thanks for taking the time. Good afternoon. No problem at all. We're here just doing tax returns. Yeah, I was going to say, busy time of year for you. Uh, do you see this as a big crunch time for a lot of people? Do they wait to the last minute? And if so, what kind of tips do you have for people who are filing at that last minute deadline? Okay, so the first thing I'll say, no need to panic. We still have time. We have the filing due date is April 30th for most Canadians. If you are self-employed or you have a spouse or common law partner that has, that is self-employed, your due date is June 17. While the due date may be extended to June 17, your obligation to pay your final tax balance still falls on April 30th. A key point to know is that you must file your tax return on April 30th to avoid any late filing penalties. The interest rate that applies to unpaid taxes is 10%. That's quite, that's quite an increase from what we've seen in prior years. So I would encourage taxpayers that do have a balance owing to make their payment by April 30th, and if they can't, to make other arrangements because the Canada Revenue Agency's rate of 10% is quite steep. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, yeah, 10%, that's quite a bit. Uh, when it comes to what deductions you think people really shouldn't be missing, what, what about that? Okay, this year will be the first year that we have the uh, tax deduction for, the, for contributions made to the first home savings account. So for individuals that are saving to buy their first home, there's the... the there's the deductibility of a contribution of up to $8,000. That's a deduction from your actual income, and it's deducted, and the tax credit is calculated based on your marginal tax rate, which is actually a very good deduction. So you get a deduction when you put the money in, and you don't pay the taxes. Number one, you don't pay the taxes on the income that's being earned on the investments inside that account. And you also don't have to pay taxes when you withdraw to actually make a purchase of a home. So that is a good deduction that most people should be aware of. Um, the other thing that I would point out, you know, there's a couple of other good things that are in our tax legislation, again, around housing, the multi-generational home renovation tax credit that allows for a tax credit of 15% to a maximum expenditure of $50,000 for individuals that are creating a second dwelling within their home to accommodate a senior or a relative that is over the age of 17 that has a disability. A um, couple other things that maybe I'll just point out. Most people are aware of the uh, work from home deduction. Uh, historically, during the COVID period, there was a simplified method where you were able to claim $2 a day for every day that you work from home. That no longer applies for the 2023 filing season. If you did work from home, you need to meet the regular conditions, which requires you to have work primarily from home. So more than 50% of your duties must have been carried out at home in order to be eligible for the work from home deduction. A couple other things, maybe just very quickly, the journalism credit. If you're acquiring and paying for digital subscription to a, to a newspaper, there's a 15% deduction there. Okay, uh, we didn't even get to how to maximize your return for 2024. That was another question I had for you, but I do have to leave it there. Armando Minacucci, tax partner with Grant Thornton, LLP. Thanks for all the good advice. Really appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. And good luck with the tax season.